start. Hi everyone, I'm Siobhan Sarna, and it is a pleasure to share this time with you. Um, this is my cat Petunia, she's very involved. And this is Sinclair Keneally. And Sinclair and I have become dear friends. I met her first professionally as uh, someone who helped me with my healing and who surprised me, honestly, like legit. You know, I'm not easily surprised these days by uh, health information. I'm, I'm constantly in awe of the new developments, but I'm I'm not always surprised by angles and approaches and different thought patterns. And um, that's a good thing because I've been researching and doing this for a while now, but Sinclair and her healing partner, Michael, uh, really changed my perspective about a few things that were critical in me moving forward and getting well. And her approach is very much root cause. It's very much for, from her own experience of clearing tens of thousands of her own personal gallstones, as well as getting her health back, uh, basically being on the brink of death, not to be overly dramatic, but it's true. And um, she's gone on to help thousands of other people be well. If you are really serious, I think it's really good that you're here. So with that being said, um, Sinclair is going to teach us today, and she does have um, Rapid Gut Reset as a course available. It's beyond a course. It's more of like a pivot in one's life. And if you'd like to participate, we have very special pricing for you. If you don't want to, that's fine too. We're just glad you're here. Um, but I do like to disclose that up at the beginning so everyone can kind of be like, oh, maybe this, oh, oh, hope. What? <laughs> so um, I just had the privilege also of seeing Sinclair in person, which was such a treat. And um, she's as pretty in person as she is here on Zoom. With that being said, Sinclair, take it away. Hi. Oh my gosh, what a beautiful warm welcome. Thank you, Siobhan. I just love doing things with you like this because um, I, I love the way that you have created your community and how serious everyone is about healing and how hopeful um, you make really difficult topics. So it's a joy to be here with you and can't wait to dive in with you. Yeah. While she's doing that, remember we have the one rule, be nice or be gone. Please refrain from chatting during the um, presentation unless it's a tech issue in which Clarissa will be here. And uh, we have someone, some people from your team too today, don't we? Yeah. Hannah is here to help answer okay. admin questions when the time is right. So we'll be okay. okay. All yeah. right. Okay. Let's do right. it. I know we have so much to cover. So let's just make sure. Can everybody see my slides? Okay. Yes. I don't know about you, but I'm a visual person really helps me to cover intense topics um, when we've got some visuals. So yeah, it's a, Siobhan mentioned that I've had my own health journey and we'll talk about that in a second. And it's just, I really appreciate this community because I know that so many of you have been on an in-depth quest to figure out what is going to heal you as well. So we have that in common. So this is for you if you have chronic health issues and you suspect that gut disruption and detox pathway congestion may be factors for you, especially if you've been exploring, you know, your persistent SIBO stuff, mold and or parasites, and you suspect that those are factors and you haven't been successful in resolving these issues. This is also for you if you have multiple digestive issues. I don't know about you, but um, I actually had everything on this list. <laughs> so uh, if you had food sensitivities or allergies, nausea, acid reflux, heartburn, GERD, bloating, constipation, or diarrhea, or just for fun, that alternating constipation and diarrhea, because that always makes sense, right? You never know what you can count on. Um, colitis or Crohn's, SIBO, CIFO, IBS, um, Candida, H. pylori, and any other known infections, that's A-OK. -okay. This is actually the perfect place for you. And that's what we're going to tackle today. So I always say that it's okay for us to talk about hard things because the solutions are here and they're available to us now. So we can be brave and look at the tough stuff uh, because as soon as we know what the hidden stressors are that are actually causing your gut symptoms or may have started them in the first place, then it becomes so much more clear on how to determine your next steps. So by the end of our time together, you're going to learn how to take back control of your digestion, your energy levels, your emotional well-being, and your very sense of self. I don't mind telling you that I really struggled with my mental and emotional health when I was working on my gut health. And it was a very, very difficult process for me. So I think it's important for us to have a gentle, open conversation about that because, you know, if you're having gut issues, your emotions are absolutely going to be affected. So that's why I speak about it in this way. 
So because this is a really special time for us to just show up and be present for your health, let's turn off all distractions and let's jump right in. This is, I'll just tell you a little bit about how I got here. Some of you may already know me because um, I've been on Siobhan Summits and her stages and she's always gracious enough to include me because I love to serve you guys. And um, this is my partner, Michael, and we both were actually quite ill for a very long period of time. And the truth is, um, I don't think our, our story is very much different from most of you. We had decades of warning signs, escalating symptoms. For me, I was very aware of my anxiety and depression. And then I actually ended up in the hospital. Um, they thought I was having a heart attack. They, I thought I was dying. And um, I remember very vividly the hospitalists being kind of excited when I was admitted to the ICU, like, ooh, we got a live one here. We have an interesting case. And I remember watching their excitement wane and their they became quite disinterested and even annoyed with me when I didn't have a clear answer. I was a mystery patient. The scans, the EKGs, you know, my x-rays, nothing, the lab work, none of it made sense. Everything looked fine. So they didn't believe me, honestly. And I remember walking out of there still in my hospital gown. I didn't even check myself out. I didn't have health insurance. It's like, well, they'll, they'll find me somehow, I'm sure. Charge me for all of this. I thought I was going home to die. And that's how I think many of us have felt to one degree or another with our current medical system. It's not that, you know, Western medicine isn't miraculous. It absolutely is when it's dealing with traumatic or acute things. But for so many of us that have chronic issues that come on slowly, where traditional lab work values are not as revealing, you know, as we would like them to be about what's really going on under the surface, it can be really devastating to try to get answers from traditional medicine. So I just share that because I know that I'm not alone in experiencing that. And there's still lots and lots of hope and lots of low-hanging fruit, if that's the case for you. Because the truth was, even though I was down to three foods and, you know, for a long period of time and eating was really scary and painful and all the things for me, um, it was actually that I had just a few root causes. I had hidden mold poisoning. I had a high toxin load that I didn't understand. And I actually had been poisoned by heavy metals from my amalgam fillings, from being in the womb from my mom. She had been, uh, she was a fixer upper of houses, houses in the seventies, um, right before I was born. And, um, you know, she was building the American dream with my dad, scraping lead paint off the walls with her own hands. And, um, what she didn't realize is that we, she was getting poisoned and by extension, I was too. Um, cause in, when I was born later, so. Uh, I also had high EMF exposure in my sleeping environment. I was sleeping in six or seven volts and I didn't realize it. it was a wiring error in our walls. It was actually frying me alive while I slept. And so my body couldn't rest. It couldn't rebuild my gut and it couldn't detox well because of that. So I got lots of diagnoses along the way. I got diagnosed with fibromyalgia, Hashimoto's, SIBO, Lyme, um, colitis, EBV, lots of co-infections. But the truth is it all came down to those root causes. And I'm now symptom-free because I finally got the resolution to those root causes. So getting those labels sometimes can feel like a relief to us. You know, I, I remember vividly the day I got my SIBO label, for example, and I thought it was going to be the day that set me free. I thought that that was going to be, um, you know, a clear pathway forward. And unfortunately at that time, you know, there wasn't anything available to really explain the pathway for me. And certainly not for my Lyme, my fibromyalgia, you know, the colitis, that was another scary one. It sounded so bad. You know, I got lots of um, horror stories about, oh, you're going to have to have part of your, you know, intestines removed. That's very common. You're never going to be able to come off medications. And the truth is there are lots of solutions available to us now that are actually quite gentle and systemic in nature. And um, so that's what we're going to talk about today. Michael had a very different experience. He had um, really bad skin conditions and he had completely different gut symptoms. He was the mast cell guy, the histamine guy. I don't know if that resonates with any of you, but you know, he could just look at a high histamine food <laughs> it felt like, and his body would start reacting. He had TMJ, teeth grinding. He didn't sleep for decades. Um, he also couldn't eat without serious gut distress, it was very different gut symptoms than me. I had nausea, acid reflux, GERD. He had like, you know, a, a very different experience that, um, I'll, I'll let him keep his privacy, but it was not fun. So, but he also had the same root causes as me and that's when the light bulb went on for us. 
because even though he looked very different than I did, he also had been exposed to mess and to mold, heavy metals, um, toxins, and parasites. And he is now symptom free as well because he finally tackled those. So I'm just sharing this because you might be in this chat today with us and have different constellation of symptoms than everyone else in this room. But that doesn't mean you don't have the same root causes. And chasing symptoms can be really exhausting and confusing. But, um, and because they're so bio individual in our expressions of distress, you can really feel like you get stuck going down these, these rabbit holes and there are no easy answers. But the truth is, if you zoom out and if you look at this from a root cause perspective, everything gets a lot simpler from there. So that's how we talk about it this way. So I also want to point out that um, we think of ourselves as like multi-layered conscious beings. You know, we often talk about the mental and emotional aspects of healing. You know, I'm a very spiritual person. I don't mind saying that um, to you. And, and I still, while I believe in all those gentle tools of rapid change work and nervous system support and these therapies, um, I'm very aware um, as I used, I used to be a mental health practitioner, so did Michael. He was, that's where we started was mental health. He was a therapist. I was a somatic trauma release specialist. I specialized in trauma release. What we're dealing with today is like no other time in history. So while we may want to and be comfortable at different levels of our being, working a healing protocol or on our healing journey, the truth is if we don't focus on the environmental piece, everything else is harder because we're getting interrupted in today's day and age like never before. We're really designed as self-replenishing systems, right? We're supposed to take in food, air, water, light, you know, the replenishing frequencies of the earth, the human frequencies, and always be fed by that. And I deeply believe personally that we're also fed from the top down. You know, maybe that's nature for you. Maybe you would use spiritual words or religious words. That's great. All of it is wonderful. Um, but I believe that we're designed to be self-replenishing and that the body never loses its brilliance. The problem is we've just been interrupted. That's all. So when we've been interrupted, the body never stops trying to heal, but it didn't actually evolve with these interruptions. So we have to help it out with a little bit of strategic support, but it's all fixable. The problem is the way we try to fix it is we finally suffer enough from these toxin exposures that we get stagnant. Our lymph gets stagnant, our liver gets out, our gut gets interrupted. We're not releasing or excreting or detoxing well anymore. So we tend towards distress in the nervous system. We tend towards negative emotions that we never used to be that way, right? I think humans are naturally set to a positive set point, but we find ourselves being anxious or more, or more depressed or more negative than we used to be. And I really believe that it starts honestly from the stagnation from the bottom up. Yes, there's trauma. I'd be the first one to admit that. I personally experienced a lot of trauma in my lifetime, but I also deeply believe in the resilience of the human spirit. So what I want to always focus on is what has interrupted that resilience. And that's why this matters so much because you don't have to have been in an exotic exposure today. You could have just showered in your you know, city water, um, you know, drank tap water or used a Brita filter. They're getting sued right now for their claim. Um, and for overstating what their capabilities are, you know, we thought we were doing normal things. We thought we were eating food that was safe because it was on the shelf in a grocery store. And the truth is it was full of toxic preservatives, heavy metals, um, and all sorts of weird herbicides and pesticides. So it doesn't have to be anything strange. If you're alive today, you've probably been interrupted. And I just want you to know that your body's having a very logical response to this. And it can feel like stagnation and chronic gut conditions. It can feel like negativity, brain fog, stress, and even this really hard to define disconnection. And we may have to suffer enough to finally get a label, right? It might take quite some time to feel like we're finally getting some answers. The problem is our solutions for those answers are a little bit incomplete, right? So whether you're in Western medicine or natural health, the answer is often pills and pills are great. I, I'm the first one to say supplements, you can't skip that step. I would say it's about 25% of the resolution of these root causes, especially for gut issues, but it really is just 25%. So you can have all of these conditions 
right? That have really got your attention. And even these related conditions, skin issues, sleep issues, hormone imbalances, rapid aging. We all feel like we're aging and fast forward right now. I was getting mistaken for being um, in my early 60s when I was 31. That is no joke. That was really upsetting to me personally. <laughs> but I have aged backwards as I healed. It's not an accident. You know, that brain fog, I couldn't read an email or write a sentence for years because the Lyme had taken over and I really wasn't absorbing any of my food. So um, there just wasn't anything to work with for the body and my, my nervous system was just not working. But um, those pills that we want to use to fix everything, they're a great part of the picture, but they're not everything. So we have to look and say like, how do we systemically approach this? And to do that, first we have to uh, like look at the body and say, okay, body, I know that what you're doing has been frustrating for me, but it's actually perfectly logical. You're having the perfect response to whatever stress you're under. I'm going to dig in and I'm going to learn what that is, right? Which means we got to think like a root cause practitioner. That's what we're doing. So let's look under the hood at some of these conditions, right? Now, this is just a short list, but what we see in terms of patterns um, across the population that we serve is that um, I, I start seeing like alarm bells go off as somebody explains their symptoms to me, right? And I'm looking upstream. What was the original issue, right? What was the thing that was the straw that broke the camel's back that always gets the most attention? But what were the stressors even before that that started adding up and um, filling up your toxin bucket? So what we see is yes, parasites, of course, are going to play a role, you know, Infections are going to play a role with IBS, SIBO, CIFO. We know this, but those are really here because they're taking advantage of this other, these other factors. Parasites are not the bad guys. They're actually toxin sponges and they're here to do a job for us. They just come at a really high cost. It means they eat first. They disrupt and distort our behavior. You know, they can disrupt our sleep. They can cause all kinds of symptoms skin issues, liver issues, gut symptoms, food sensitivities, chemical sensitivities, like they can really run the show. Anxiety, depression. But they're really here because you were exposed to mold or you're exposed to industrial toxins, including pharmaceuticals. You know, Michael was put on um, Accutane when he was a teenager and, you know, his parents were told it was safe and they were trying to help him because he had acne and he was embarrassed. But they had been living a very toxic lifestyle and feeding him fake plastic food that was normal. You know, he grew up in the early 90s and 80s. You know, that's okay. So we were eating Twinkies and Lunchables and handy snacks like that. Remember that orange plastic cheese? Like that is not food. And so his gut was already responding to that, to those toxins. And then you add in an, a prescription like Accutane that shuts down your liver so effectively and efficiently. You start forming stones at a young age. And oh my goodness, parasites are going to set up shop. They're going to take advantage of that situation. So fake food absolutely plays a role, like I just said, herbicides, pesticides, preservatives, food dyes, all of those things, the plastics that we've normalized in our food additives today. We just have to be aware of that. Even if we've been eating organic for like a couple of years now, or even a few years, so many of my um, audience members and my students, my clients, they're, they call themselves the gluten-free yogis who still feel like crud. You know, they're doing everything right. You know, we're going to talk about that today. What does that mean? And, um, but the truth is they grew up on the junk and they still haven't empowered their bodies to let go of it all the way. So heavy metals, that's another one that, uh, that can be from your amalgam fillings. That can be from fish. That can be from your mom. Mom and maternal fetal toxin transfer is really the, the number one source still of your lead and your mercury. And also, uh, you know, this doesn't have to be anything exotic. And then of course, EMFs. So we'll talk about what EMFs are in a second, if you don't already know. So that's IBS, SIBO, SIBO. Those are the things I go to first. And I start assessing and helping you evaluate how much are these affecting you? Let's find out. You can do that through lab work. You can also do that through just symptomology and self-assessment. We'll talk about that more. But what about other issues like food sensitivities? So many people are working with food allergies or just they, you know, like, oh no, I can't tolerate most foods. I haven't touched gluten in a long time. I'm, I can't even do most grains. I can't do dairy. 
I have a dairy intolerance or allergy. Um, and when you look at like this, this beautiful picture of healthy foods, well, actually when you're, when your gut is already on the back foot and it has been for quite some time, this right here is riddled with irritants, riddled with irritants because your bucket is already full. If you were already healthy, these would be really healthy foods for you, for most of you here. You know, you might be really feeling replenished as you choose any or all of these foods. But if you've already been overloaded, you're, it's gonna, food is going to become a minefield. So, um, the you know, legumes, which I love, you know, as an almost lifelong vegetarian, um, those have lectins and can be high in oxal oxalates as well. Even avocado, one of my favorite foods, can be a histamine liberator. If you're overloaded with these root causes over here, parasites, molds, and EMFs are notorious for increasing your histamine load. You being in the presence of your Wi-Fi router can actually 10x your histamine load if you're up close to it in the body within a very short period of time. That's, that's pretty, that really gets my attention. As soon as somebody says I'm histamine sensitive or I can't tolerate things like citrus, which should be life-giving, right? That's full of vitamin C. That's full of structured water and so many beautiful antioxidants. Um, if you can't tolerate these foods that came from the earth, um, chances are your bucket's already full with disruptors. It's not that your body's broken. It's not that you're on the back foot. It's that you have been interrupted, right? Same thing like tomatoes, nightshades. Most people can't tolerate nightshade if they're in, um, if they have gut issues. Okay. Well, what about, you know, almonds? Okay. Well, those are just super high in oxalates. So if you have kidney issues, joint issues, gut disruption, you know, the studies are there. Um, it's very clear now that if we are overdoing it with oxalate foods, no matter how natural and organic and beautifully grown they are, it can be too much for you if your bucket's already full. So these are things that we need to unpack, right? If the sourcing, if you're a meat eater, the sourcing of your meat is going to matter a lot and you're going to become much more sensitive to foods that potentially would have replenished you. Um, except for if they're full of toxins, if those um, animals have been fed um, corn and soy with high amounts of, you know, um, herbicides, pesticides, and yes, heavy metals, then that's something also for you to unpack. Even spinach, full of histamine and oxalates, not so easy on a gut that's overloaded, right? If it's already been interrupted, food becomes really difficult. But I just want to underscore for you, root causes, are you noticing a pattern here? because they're exactly the same in terms of like the biggest, broadest themes that we see, right? Oh, look, nausea, acid reflux, GERD, also the same, exactly the same. Parasites, mold, industrial toxins, fake food, heavy metals, EMFs. Well, what about Crohn's and Crohn's? Those are autoimmune conditions. Also the same. Parasites alone can cause autoimmune conditions. We are, it's well established now that industrial toxins, um, you know, Kieran Christian talks about this so elegantly. And I know that you talked with him a lot uh, as part of Siobhan's community. He talks about this so elegantly that autoimmune diseases can actually be caused by, um, yes, you know, genes are, um, you know, the create the foundation, but the toxins and the life stress pull the trigger. Same thing with EMFs that can perpetuate and exacerbate the presence of anti antibodies in or autoimmune markers in the body. And industrial toxins, we've already talked about mold, huge for creating Crohn's and colitis. And as you get out parasites, mold, and toxins, you can actually resolve these conditions for good. I did, and it happens every day in our practice and in our community in Rapid Recovery Set. So here's something else to consider because you might be like me and you might have um, secondary conditions, right? So what if I also have, I don't even, I don't like to say the word fatigue because it sounds far too polite for what we actually experience, right? You know, chronic fatigue syndrome. Yes, I had that diagnosis, but um, guess what? 93% of chronic fatigue syndrome patients in one study actually had um, mold present in the body. It really makes you wonder what chronic fatigue syndrome is really about, right? Parasites can also cause exhaustion. They're really good at interrupting your sleep. And because they're robbing you of your nutrients, they always get to eat first. It's very common for people with gut, um, uh, <laughs> gut dysbiosis, infections, and parasites to have exhaustion. Well, fake food is also going to do the same thing. 
We might be overfed, but we're really malnourished, right? I think that describes most Americans today for sure. And of course, heavy metals and EMS. Okay, what about skin conditions? Well, Michael's a great example of that. Rosacea, psoriasis, eczema, these can all be created by or exacerbated by parasites, mold, industrial toxins, fake food, heavy metals, and EMFs. And we see these resolve at the rate that you tackle the root causes. I had a thyroid condition. I had Hashimoto's. Turns out um, that was closely related to the fact that I had been um, living in mold in several different homes. It was in my car. It was at my workplace over the years. When you really look back, most of my life was spent exposed to mold. And that's all it takes to get hypothyroidism. And it's all it takes to actually have that progress into Hashimoto's. Just so you know, parasites, industrial toxins, fake food, heavy metals, EMFs can all play a role as well. What about joint conditions? Wait a minute. I'm seeing a theme, right? Parasites can live in the joints. They can also, ex you know, the microscopic ones because they love to snack on your hyaluronic acid, which is right there, your synovial fluid. They're stealing all of that from you. They also um, love to, the larger uh, gut worms, they love to excrete um, endotoxins, which is their poop and pee that gets you to do certain behaviors and eat certain foods. And those can be, those endotoxins can be highly toxic to the gut. So I want to really underscore this point because you could be doing everything right, right? And I know that so many have already been on a health journey for a long time. So you may be doing everything in your power to get well. I mean, especially for hanging out at 10 a.m. on a Wednesday. I know you're in it to win it. I know you're motivated. I know you care about your body and you have already taken your health into your own hands, which is what it takes, right? We have to be the CEO of our own health. And Jenny was exactly the same way. She was that gluten-free yogi, eating perfectly, very disciplined, no alcohol, no sugar, you know, never let herself um, stray from her clean lifestyle because she was so dedicated to getting well, but she still had persistent, and I mean, endless gut pain and bloating, constipation, she was, it, her constipation was scary level. Like she had to work so hard to move her bowels. And um, it was a, like a huge focus of her day. It's just how to, how to just stay afloat, you know, and not drown in her symptoms. She also had serious reproductive distress, excessive bleeding, painful periods. She had insomnia. She'd already had her gallbladder removed. That had not resolved any of her issues. And what she didn't know when she came to us and she thought she was eating perfectly was that she had hidden exposure to mold. And it was only me pushing and pushing and pushing her that she finally did the immunolytics plates and discovered, oh yes, okay, we actually have mold in two places in the house. And it wasn't visible to the naked eye. And that's really common. She also had really high EMFs in her bedroom. What do I mean by that? She had a wiring error in her wall. So this wasn't even about her Wi-Fi router. She already turned her air phone on airplane mode at night. Um, she didn't have a smart TV in her bedroom or anything, but she had a wiring error in her wall where she was actually sleeping in several volts. Now, anything over one volt by the Building Biology Institute is considered catastrophic to your health. You know, and Siobhan has her own story about EMFs that maybe she'll tell you today if, she, if we have time. Um, this is a really big deal for those of us that are trying to heal while we're asleep, which is, oh yeah, everybody. We're all supposed to be healing while we sleep. We're supposed to be repairing. We're supposed to be regenerating. We're supposed to be detoxing. And she just couldn't do it. She could not use her sleep to regenerate, which meant that she kept falling further and further behind and detoxing the mold because her EMFs were so suppressive to her immune system. Nothing she did during the day translated into progress. Your body likes to use the nighttime to actually do the healing work from all the supplements, the is the nervous system support, all the nice things that you're doing during the day need to go to work at night in the body and her body just couldn't do it. So she also had some hidden chemical exposures, which we figured out and we fixed with her. And within, um, she'd been on our antiparasitic protocol for two months and she was like, look, I don't have parasites. I would have seen them by now. I would know I've been, I played a perfect game. I'm a very good client. Like I'm always a plus plus. I do exactly what you tell me. Can I come off of these yet? I said, no, you need to tackle those EMFs. So she finally measured. She finally turned the breakers off to her bedroom when we discovered the problem. And within 24 hours, I'm going to show you what came out of her. 
Is that okay? If you're, if you're squeamish, you can look away. This came out of her within 24 hours. It was her first worm. It was ropeworm. And she actually, from then on out, had ropeworms pouring out of her body for over wow. six months. Let's just say, wow. <laughs> and that came when she, when she did what, then that happened. So we had gotten all of her uh, mitochondrial support dialed in her drainage support, her detox support. We were detoxing the mold. We'd figured that part out, but she was on antiparasitics from us because we knew they were there from her symptoms. This is the thing la guys labs will not reveal your parasites. Most of the time. My parasites never showed up on any labs. We'll talk about more of the limitations of labs later today, but she was convinced because they didn't show up on labs that she shouldn't have to be on the antiparasitics. And I was like, honey, we got to do the EMF work. Something is not right. Something is actively keeping your body from letting go of the parasites. So she finally measured her body voltage where she slept, which is what yep. matters. Yep. And um, turned breakers to her bedroom so that she could have zero body voltage is what we want. And then within 24 hours, this guy came out. Thank you. I just needed you to repeat that. That's what I thought you said. Okay. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank exactly. You. Which is why in rapid gut reset, we have to talk about all of these things. We have to demystify this stuff and take it a step at a time. So what Jenny didn't realize when she said she was eating perfectly, because she'd done paleo, she'd done keto, she'd done whole 30. She'd done, you know, what she thought was right. She'd done all the juice cleanses. She did the medical medium stuff. Yeah. What she didn't realize with her salads and her smoothies was that she was actually creating histamine oxalate bombs that were super irritating to the gut. Remember how we talked about earlier, even natural healthy foods that come from the earth that should be really replenishing or really irritating when you've already got a gut lining that's distressed, when you already have parasites, when you already have mold. These foods don't feel good going down. That's actually really more common than you realize. You know, so we had to get her to step away from the juicing and just be like, okay, we're going to go really gentle here. Very gentle, easy to absorb, low histamine, low oxalate foods. Doesn't mean you can't eat veggies and produce. We just have to think about how to process them in a way and make the right selections for you. And everybody's different. But we had to help Jenny unhook from all that natural health marketing. So we'd already gotten her away from actively poking the bruise every day with her foods, right? Just that last piece was the EMFs. And that's how we finally got here. So here's what I want you to realize. You may already know that you're exposed to mold or that you had a mold exposure in the past. And yes, your, your childhood basement flooding as a kid counts. You know, back then, oh yeah, every winter our basement used to flood. You know, yeah, I kind of remember mold, played a lot of video games down there, or yeah, my, you know, my winter coats were down there and then we'd bring them out, you know, for the season. And then they went back down there. Like you are more affected by that than you know, right? Siobhan, you want to add anything there? <laughs> oh, you're muted, honey. Silently nodding, yes. Uh, whether it's a hotel room you were in, it depends on your detox pathways. My sister and I, yeah. We have surprisingly different detox pathways. I know this because of how she responds to things, but I was also in a moldy building for 20 years without knowing it and was in mold denial, but we went into a fabric store and she was fine. And I like literally, I'm starting to sweat just even having the recall and I had to go lie down in the car because the fat, the chemicals and the fabric were overwhelming me and she was fine. So it, but I had an entirely different existence than she did for 24 years in a moldy building. And prior to that, traveling two weeks out of every month in hotels for a year and a half that were, let's just say not the Ritz Carlton, but don't let that fool you. Just in a fancy hotel this weekend, that freaking room had mold like you wouldn't believe. Ah, bye. That was it. <laughs> yep. Yep. That happened to us this weekend too. Thank goodness we know what to do about it because yeah, it's just not worth it. So here's, here's what I want you to, to understand. You may have one of these root causes or you might have multiple. It's very common for those of us who suffered through chronic gut conditions to actually have more than one. So you may already know from like your gut timeline 
that you had like food poisoning or something else that was like the trigger or the straw that broke the camel's back, really, you know? But what you may not realize is you had other layers of toxicity under the surface. And that's what I really want to, I want to open a ray of hope for you today about that. Because even just mold itself from back in the day, from childhood, from, you know, your, your leaky bathroom faucet in your, your, you know, college dorm room or your, you know, your first apartment in your twenties and the landlord didn't take care of it. And you were like, well, it's not that big a deal as long as it, you know, so it doesn't get too wet or you're, you know, like Siobhan was saying, you know, traveling, even for short periods of time, this can really matter. You know, 25% of the population has, you know, impaired detox of mold and, but all of us have, um, get affected by it. I'm going to make a really strong statement. Um, and this is a bit controversial, but I deeply, um, believe that we need to talk about this more and have an honest conversation. I see quite a correlation between prior mold exposure and SIBO. I have yet to have a client come through our practice with SIBO that didn't also have a mold problem. And it's because I believe, um, because mold is so good at slowing down liver production and bile flow, that it really sets up the perfect conditions for SIBO. And uh, because it slows down gut motility right there. I'm not saying all people with SIBO have it. I'm saying I see a predominant connection there. And I would not be surprised if it was worth it for you to investigate mold if you also have SIBO. Especially if you have SIBO that lasts after treatment, after treatment, after treatment. Exactly. There's a third of the Like you and me. Right? Yeah. There's the third of the population that can clear it usually with one treatment. And then the rest of the people for a variety of reasons. But like, if the reason isn't, oh, scleroderma, endometriosis, adhesions, like, you don't know why you, your SIBO keeps coming back and you're doing everything right. Dr. Seebecker will agree a hundred percent. Like you need to look at mold. So, yeah. And I believe I'm seeing a skewed portion of the population because I'm right. known as a mold expert and a liver expert. So but I want you guys to start connecting the dots. Is this an issue for you? Right. It's time to investigate. So the, the good news is mold is fixable. Okay. This is not a life sentence or a death sentence. This is just something that needs to be chipped away at, at the pace that's right for you. Because if you have chronic gut conditions, um, if you have exhaustion, there's some repair work to do as you gently draw mold out. And what I don't see working is the really harsh mold protocols those are very damaging to the body and they can really crash you. As somebody who was very sensitive, I went through a lot of different protocols from very well-known, you know, functional medicine celebrities and I would crash and get very scared. And um, there's a lot of anxiety and, um, and even emotional and depression aspects to those crashes. So I know firsthand what that feels like. And what I have found clinically is that the gentle methods work best. And it's totally appropriate for you to proceed at a pace that's right for you. You can go fast. You know, I'm Michael and I are two ends of the spectrum on that. I was extremely fragile, crashed very easily. I had to, we created three speeds in all of our courses and, you know, in our practice for people, because I was at one end of the spectrum. I had, I could take only the smallest of doses of things without crashing. And he was at the other end of the spectrum. He was totally willing to feel short-term discomfort and just run at it and say, Hey, does this tool work? If there was standard dosing in the middle, like, Oh, two caps twice a day, I would be taking a 10th of a cap or half a cap. Michael would be saying, I wonder what eight caps twice a day does. Let's find out, you know, and you will fall somewhere on that spectrum and anywhere along that spectrum is just fine because we know how to take care of you. And then nowhere is that more true than with mold. So Because mold causes leaky gut, leaky brain, it inhibits protein synthesis. It's absolutely suppressing and and distorting your immune response. And um, it's slowing down your bile flow, which means it's also slowing down your migrating motor complex. And it's setting up the perfect conditions for weird fermentation, weird dysbiosis of all different kinds in the gut. And because it's immune suppressive, it's also setting the stage for larger parasites we need to know how to proceed with care. So depending on how acute your symptoms are, you may have to go slow and that's okay. 
it's still doable. I also want to say the same thing about industrial toxins. I know there's not a, a lot of doom and gloom on the internet about this stuff. I don't feel that way. I don't talk about anything that's not winnable or fixable. Um, so I am always thrilled to talk about poison because I've seen the effects when you pair the right binders with the right drainage support and the right energy support, and the body can absolutely recover from the toxin overload. So we get to look at this, you know, with our eyes wide open and, you know, go right at it, knowing that this is absolutely solvable. Heavy metals, same thing. Yes, they're really hard on the gut. You know, mercury, very corrosive, into not just the gut lining, but the nervous system, really hard on the brain. Very difficult for the body to get out. That's okay. That's, it's still fixable. We just have to do it in the right order. And that's why in rapid gut reset, we're very specific about what root cause to treat when. So we always start with um, herbicides and pesticides, those industrial chemicals. And then we ease into mold and starting to mop up the gut. And we ease into parasites from there. And then we ease into EMFs because this is a part that if you are willing to tackle even a little bit of your EMF load, so that EMF, remember, stands for electrical magnetic fields. So um, this is about the wiring in your walls, interacting with your body. This is about, yes, your devices with your Wi-Fi and also about your dirty electricity. But the most important thing we can do is actually just become really good at assessing our EMF load where we sleep. You're on a computer with us right now or a phone. I totally get that. That's all right. We are too. But we just want to be really smart about where we're sleeping first and systematically reduce the pressure. If you are willing to do even a few steps about your EMFs, you'll have to take less pills and you will feel faster and you will no longer be a sitting duck for parasites and infections. So we are very systematic about how we help you with this. A lot of this is free the steps that you can take. We talk about it in rapid gut reset when the time is right. And then we get into heavy metal excretion. So many people in the functional medicine space are pushing heavy metal detox too fast in harsh ways. And that's when you crash and you come running to me. And it's really sad. I hate those sub stories that end up in our inbox because I think it's totally avoidable. So I'm on a mission to talk about that. Heavy metals should come after we tackle the other pieces. And all the way along, we're offloading our bugs we're helping to reset the microbiome. And, you know, probiotics are great. Postbiotics, prebiotics, probiotics, they all have a place, but they're not gonna get, help you get on top of the parasites. Parasites have to be pulled out actively. We have to empower the immune system to actually get back in charge of the situation. If you've already been overloaded by the industrial toxins, the heavy metals, the mold, and of course your EMFs. Actually, I had to actively go after these guys, but not in a harsh way. Again, our way is very gentle. We draw them out instead of, oh, let's go in and hunt and kill, and then you'll crash and you'll feel bad, and we'll just do it for 10 days. So it doesn't really help anyway, because you never disrupt the reproductive cycle. Like parasites have a consciousness. It's not just drawing out toxins. You actually have to interrupt their life cycle because they're always making babies. They're always laying eggs. That's why you have TMJ, teeth grindings, disrupted sleep. Um, you know, dairy intolerances, anal itching, you know, skin rashes, like these are all caused by parasites, even cysts um, but, and other more serious health issues. There's lots and lots of data that show that parasites are driving that picture. So we got to draw them out and interrupt the life cycle, but without being too harsh on you. I know that you have full-time jobs and house son and families depending on you. Like this is a big deal. So we have to do this in a way that's right for you. But first I wanna answer a really important question. What if I don't detox well? And I know that's a lot of people feeling that way in the audience today, right? What if happens if I've already tried detoxes and don't detox well? The truth is you're always detoxing. That's the good news. Your body knows how to detox. You have your own detox pathways. You have your emunctory organs. And they're, they are working to an extent or you'd be dead. What we want to do is support that detox process at a pace that's right for you and increase your capacity. Even if you're at the super sensitive end of the spectrum like me, you can actually grow in capacity with your ability to detox and graduate all the way to Michael's end of the spectrum. 
where, you know, I can take really high doses of things if I wanted to, and I would feel nothing because I've increased my capacity to release over time, but I did it at a pace that was right for my body. And I really listened. And that's what's required of us. I think in this day and age, we have to be the CEOs of our own health. So you just need a framework, right? And then a set of tools that addresses your hidden root causes and goes at the right pace for you. So we want to explore our root causes like we've been talking about today. And we also want to assess your capacity. Are you at the me end of the spectrum or the Michael end of the spectrum? And we also want to choose our food filters. Remember when we talked about those healthy foods that could actually be irritating? You know, spinach might not be right for you right now because you are actually histamine sensitive and you didn't realize it. Or almonds may not be right for you right now, even though they're a beautiful source of protein because they're too hard on the gut. They're too high in oxalates. That might be, one of those might be true, but not both. Everybody is different. You're expressing your sensitivities differently. So your job is to learn about the food filters. That's why we provided, we created these food filter guides for you to assess your symptoms and evaluate, hey, which step is right for me right now? Does it mean you're never gonna be able to eat the rainbow? No, of course not. It just means for right now, let's not poke the bruise we're trying to heal. And that's gonna be different for every person. That's why for so many of us, you know, the low FODMAP diet is a godsend, but sometimes it's not enough. That's okay. Sometimes we have to, you know, assess these other food filters and you may only need them for a period of time. I can eat tomatoes now, but I couldn't without serious gut pain for a very long time. My joints would swell. I feel like a knife was ripping into my gut. And I can eat them fine now. I had tomato sauce yesterday. We just want to stop poking the bruise we're trying to heal. So your food filters are important. And then from there, we design your detox. I also want to talk about why other protocols haven't worked. And I know you've been putting these dots together the entire time, but just in case, I really want to underscore the other protocols you've tried haven't supported excretion enough. We haven't gently unwound the constriction to slowly open up, you know, your detox pathways might be like, uh, there might be a lot of white water, like with very narrow banks, like, oh, it's really choppy trying to get this stuff out the body. If we gently smooth that out and widen the banks, you can have a nice flowing river of release through your detox pathways where the water is running smoothly. The toxins are flowing out at a nice, beautiful pace. If you take the time to break up the stagnation and really support excretion, we have to replenish your energy to do that. And you have to actually energize your detox systems to do that. I am just shocked at how many quote unquote detox experts there are out there even today that are like not helping you replenish your energy first before adding to the body's to-do list. That's just, that doesn't even make any sense to me. Your mitochondria are shut down because they've been exposed to toxins, exposed to mold. You know, parasites excrete endotoxins that are toxic to the mitochondria. Life events, stress, trauma can also slow down mitochondrial function. We've got to wake them back up and let them know it's safe to start producing energy again and to give them the micronutrients they need, right? That don't actually require a good functioning gut to get those in. That's the catch 22, right? How are you supposed to heal your gut if every tool that somebody's giving you to heal your gut actually has to be digested and absorbed first? That's just painful, right? It doesn't make any sense. So we need pre-digested repair elements coming into the system, right? Things that actually re replenish you. So aminos that are not rancid, your essential aminos. And that's very few products on the market that can actually fit that bill that don't require digestion because our protein synthesis and our digestion is impaired. It means that we're, we don't actually have access to the aminos that we're even taking in unless we're doing that in a very thoughtful, strategic way micro minerals that are bioavailable that don't require digestion. There's so many reasons why your other protocols haven't worked. And there's so many reasons to have hope today. And that's why we created Rapid Get Reset. That's an eight-week course that helps you resolve your chronic gut condition by resolving the very root causes we've been talking about today. So here's how we do it. We reclaim your energy first. We give you a nice energy boost at the beginning. We need quick wins to let the body know, hey, you're safe. It's okay. It's safe to start working on these bigger problems. We're going to give you everything you need for that. Easy food filters to personalize your perfect food plan for your symptoms. 
releasing old food and stored colon material, dissolving biofilms and releasing parasites at a rate that's right for you, detoxing mold and heavy metals, resealing your gut lining, and helping your microbiome to actually relearn how to maintain itself. So here's how we do that. We actually meet with you twice a week for eight weeks. Um, you don't have to be there live, but you certainly can be if you enjoy the feeling of the community. We also have, so we have a weekly in-depth training, and we also have four of our practitioner team members, plus Michael and me present every time with you to answer your questions live in the chat um, as we train. And short video lessons, if you're overwhelmed and you don't learn easily like me, remember I couldn't read an email or write a sentence for years while I was trying to heal. Talk about like, <laughs> it was an uphill battle trying to figure out what was gonna work for my health. So I could only tolerate little bits of information at a time. And knowing that we created these little short videos for you and as an alternative to those longer trainings. Some of them are only five minutes long. Some of them are eight or 10 minutes long. Hey, here's how to use this tool. Here's one thing to know. Here's how to get started, right? Helpful protocol cheat sheets, over 750 FAQ um, videos now. So instant answers for your questions. What if I'm histamine sensitive? What if I react? What if I can't, you know, what if I have skin issues? What if I can't poop? What if I started pooping and I can't stop? <laughs> All the questions. We, we actually have over 50,000 visits to our FAQ library. It's one of the most beloved things in our, in our wow. community. I know, right? That's a lot. And you also That's get awesome. forum support too from our practitioners, your peers and our grads, and of course, live Q&A sessions with Michael and me. So that's the good news is that we've actually really thought about this. We've taken thousands of people through the system now. And yes, um, this is a big lift for our team and we need to take care of our practitioners because they stop everything they're doing to support you through these eight weeks. So this is not a DIY, you're left to high and dry, you're stuck kind of course. Um, but we also wanted to make it really easy for you to come in because we love Siobhan and her community. We know that you are just like us. You're in it to win it. You've taken your health into your own hands and you're really smart. You've been educating yourself on the gut and what it takes to heal already. So we wanted to make this as easy as possible for you. If you join live today, we're going to um, extend this discount to you and you can get started for just $3.99 and you know, spread it out over three payments. You can actually get an additional discount and pay in full um, for a full 50% off. And we also want to let you know that if you join live today, you actually get our deep sleep reset course as well because you have to be able to rest in order to heal. It takes energy to heal. And for so many of us with gut issues, we haven't rested well in a long time. And we, our gut actually wants to repair while we're asleep. So we wanted to make that as easy as possible for you. And um, any, and by the way, I know that um, Hannah is probably dropping the link in the chat for you right now. Yay. Um, so you can check out the, the sales page. I wanna show you behind the scenes in the course and in our forum, yeah. our FAQ library. But as you're signing up today, uh, I also wanna give you your first homework because you're gonna get started right away. Um, especially watching the leave your diagnosis behind lesson. That is a game changer. So really exciting. Thank what questions you. do you have, Siobhan? Yes, thank you. We do have some great questions. And and Sinclair has given us $1,000 off um, if you do the pay in full with code Siobhan. If you hit, click our link, it does have it pre-populated with the word Siobhan, but otherwise wherever you, you know, if you find the link um, and it doesn't have that pre-population type in Siobhan, because that's a thousand dollars off. That's very generous, Sinclair. Thank you. And if you do the payment plan, it's still a nice $800 off. So Primo, that is a phenomenal, phenomenal value. Thank you. Um, where's the link? Just look in the chat. I'm glad you asked that. It's right in the chat. Literally, Liz, it's literally in the chat right above your, your comment right there. Um, and and uh, Clarissa's just reposted it. Can we just take 30 seconds more to have you go into the course just to show everyone? Absolutely. And then yeah. we'll get get to you, um, get some questions to you. Yeah, I'm happy to. Okay, so as you log in, once you buy, you're going to get immediate access to this beautiful overview of what we cover in each weekly module, resolving hidden infections, restoring a state of flow, and the order of the root cause resolution that we go in. You get all the um, like ability to join live if you want to. 
And there's also always replays. You also get lifetime access to the course. So you can follow along with us in real time and just soak up all the support. You can ask a hundred questions, you know, to our practitioners because you can do that in the forum. You can pre-submit them in forms um, ahead of time. Even if you can't attend the Q and A's, you can pre-submit questions that we will answer nice. for you. And you also um, get a lot of help in navigating in the forum, which I'll show you in a second. So as you get started, you'll see oh, we used a lot of emojis and things because I didn't read well. And I remember what that feels like. So we just make it very, very simple. Some of these videos are super short, as you can see. And you're going to come in and you're going to choose your own kit. So remember how I talked about how there's actually um, three different speeds at which we go. Like I'll show you our very first protocol. You guys want a, a sneak peek? Well, let's see. Of course, now I'm not going to be able to find it. Um, oh, and we talked about the different food filters. We also give you healing state support every time because what we've noticed is that if you don't support your nervous system, this takes too long. So we give you really easy ways to do that that are free. You can do them in the car, in the bathroom, in a meeting, at work, you know, uh, in your bed at night. Like there's lots of different, very gentle ways um, to actually reset the um, nervous system, support the vagus nerve, reset the limbic system. It doesn't have to be complicated. This is all about returning to ease and flow. So um, that's the good news. And of course, like this is where you can submit your questions. Nice and easy, submit your form, da, da, da. What would you like to have happen? Um, I also want you to see the form itself. So while you're live in the course, for two whole months, you get access to our forum. And this is really, um, look how, like, how robust this is. Look at how many new posts we already have right now. That's awesome. I know, and then I logged in yesterday. So Rapid Get Reset gets a lot of support in here. And we really do call this our sacred space. I know you're very intentional about this as well, Siobhan. You and I are on the yeah. same page about this. Like this is not a Facebook group where you go to whine and get depressed. This is actually a place where you could talk about really hard things and get lots of support and also get celebrated. You know, you'll always see celebrating wins. There's 147 new ones. My goodness. That's awesome. I know, right? Uh, guys, that doesn't include the test. A, 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 a functional test can run you three hundred dollars. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. uh, do you need what kind of testing is involved in terms of needing? And that great kind of question. Thing? Yeah. So what we what I mentioned earlier, I uh, about parasite testing mm -hmm. is unfortunately still true. I wish the commercial testing was actually more revealing for us about parasites. Yeah. We don't see it as a good use of your money. So we yeah. teach you how to evaluate your symptoms. It's actually the gut function assessment that you take as soon as you enter the course. So we teach you how to read that for yourself without paying for lab work. That's not going to give you a real answer at best anyway. You know, those parasite tests have like a 24% replication rate, which means they can only replicate the results 24% of the time. That's not good. So other tests that you might want to do, we actually provide to you at our cost. So you get an, an amazing discount on those as a current student of ours. Um, so you could take a mold test if you wanted to, um, and that's available to you in the portal. You, we also teach you how to test your home in a very cost-effective way if you believe it's an issue for you. We also show you which test to take if you wanted to see toxins. Same thing, heavily discounted as an active student of ours. Okay. The thing that I want you to be aware of is that, um, or... We didn't want to add that and require it in the, in the course, because so many of you already know, like I can see the mold, I can smell it. Like I don't need a test. I just want to spend the money on the supplement. So we wanted you to have that option. Right. Okay. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Um, is there a best test for candida or yeast overgrowth, Maria? You know, it's a great question. So the O test will tell you um, that you have candida. But the truth is you, you actually can just go directly to the root causes. The candida is a sign of distress. It's actually there to help mop up the mess. It's an opportunist for mold and it's an opportunist for heavy metals. So a better use of your money would actually be to test for your original root causes. And we don't wanna get rid of the, the candida faster than we get rid of the mold or the heavy metals, um, you know, 
taking birth control for a long period of time because candida also mops up xenoestrogens and excess estrogen could also be a factor. So you will know with your health history if that's the case for you. But in general, I don't recommend wasting your money on that if budget's a factor. You know, there's lots of tests we could run, but I get sob stories all the time from our students that, you know, you had a functional medicine practitioner run $5,000 worth of labs and it didn't actually help you get closer to your root causes. Uh, so I'm just going to keep going through some questions here. Please explain the connection between mold and teeth grinding. Can it affect a three-year-old child? Yes. That is a great question. Yes. Um, so mold actually would set up shop in the body and provide the ability for parasites to come in and take over. Mm -hmm. So the, the connection between teeth grinding and parasites is well established. Um, you know, this is a, a a uh, clinical observation that came out of bioregulatory medicine, which is what I studied. I studied with the old cranky German and Swiss guys that are actually still decades ahead of American doctors. It's really, it's a strange how the, the medicine doesn't jump the pond the way it should, mm. you know, but um, that's, so I would say like, yes, if mold is present, you can assume that there are infections taking advantage of that, which could include parasites. And yes, that, that could be driving back for sure, for sure. When skin conditions are mentioned, no one ever mentions seborrhea. I've had it on my scalp for years, but nothing I've tried has helped. Is it not related to gut issues like other skin conditions since no one ever talks about it? Don't make that assumption, Debbie. Mm -mm. <laughs> it can yeah. definitely be associated with it. Yeah, so seborrhea is like a, often is caused, like held under like the, the larger umbrella of just dermatitis. Mm -hmm. So people are a little bit sloppy about a lot of those smaller conditions it's not it's not small to you but it just affects less of the population so it just gets thrown into the bucket of dermatitis is what i've seen happen it doesn't mean that your skin condition isn't caused by the same root causes though you have to think about like those scalp issues like they your brain drains last we want to support drainage and excretion and really support the body to heal the gut and actually be in a position to manage the microbiome of the skin and actually, you know, hold that in check and, and actually resolve your symptoms. So I would still always go to the gut, um, specifically for seborrhea, but in general with dermatitis. What do you do if you go to a hotel and see or find mold? You said, fortunately, we knew what to do. What did you do, Sinclair? I always bring um, mold binders with me just in case. Yeah. And I also um, moved rooms immediately. So if I walk in and I get a spidey sense, I don't have to see it. I don't have to smell it. I just smell a little musty. I turn right back around and I go to the front desk and I say, hi, I'm nice. But um, I asked for a, 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 to, to switch rooms. And yeah. I also explain like this can be um, cause severe health issues with somebody. You don't want to be calling an ambulance in the middle of the night. You need to alert maintenance and hotel management. If I feel like they're blowing me off, I talk to the hotel manager. Yep. Okay, good. Um, let's see, can a rope worm be seen in a colonoscopy? It's quite large and can't imagine it wasn't seen. <laughs> I love this also remember, you, remember your large intestines are going to be as cleaned out as much as possible with that prep. Yeah. So but, you're, you flushed out your large intestine, you fasted, mm -hmm. you have to think like a parasite. A parasite is not going to be where the food isn't. So parasites generally are going to prefer the small intestine anyway, you know, because that's where the action is for most of them. You know, yes, there are blood flukes, there are intestinal flukes, there are liver flukes, but most of them are going to hang out like most types of parasites of those larger gut worms are going to hang out in the intestine. Strongyloides there, but lots of different populations of parasites are different. Like strongyloides will go lay their eggs in your lungs. Yes, they can oh. enter and exit the gut lining at will. That's how liver flukes do it. They come in on your food, on your produce, and they enter the small intestine. They punch a hole through the small intestine lining, which is only one cell thick. It's not hard to do, guys. Right, right. And they migrate to the liver and bury themselves in it. So you have to think like a parasite. They're so much smarter than you when it comes to this stuff. You've already fasted. You clean out your colon. Why would they be there right then? We never right. see parasites on colonoscopies. Right. Otherwise... The whole conversation about gut health would be totally different. Right. Um, do you, there's controversy around rope worms. Uh, yes, there is. Because they don't have DNA or body parts when they're tested. What's your opinion? 
So if you have a curiosity about, about rope worm and you want to go down the rabbit hole, there actually is a rope worm DNA mapping project that they've been raising money for for years. They actually have partially mapped it at this point. Um, Alex, V, it begins with a V, I'm not going to remember. Just Google um, rope worm DNA project and you'll find Alex V something. He's Russian. And here's the point, guys. I am very practical in nature about this stuff. Um, you can have somebody argue with you all day long about the DNA of rookworm. Who cares right. if it's driving symptoms and if you get it out and you don't have the symptoms anymore and you get back to your life, who cares? Truly. Uh yeah, right. Exactly. We only have about five minutes left, but I did want to definitely encourage you all to enroll, check it out, experience it. You're going to be in great hands. And um, the elemental diet is not part of the protocol, Tim, per se. Um, I That's just not, that's just not their lane. Um, it's congruent with that. If you need to be on yeah. that for safety, um, right. we do come it, Every, there are many people on the elemental diet as they come in, in every cohort, but it's not a requirement and you don't need to go on it. Okay. And then also, um, Sinclair, if someone wanted to consult with you, what's your wait list or are you even seeing patients right now? It's about four months right now. Okay. And that's, I know it's hard. So this is actually the fastest way to get in see us and get questions answered by us and get guidance. This is a very live experience, guys. You can also, um, you know, you could book a call with our team to discuss your needs. Like that's, you're, that's totally available to you. But I just want to let you know that this is the backbone of what we do to change people's lives. And it happens in just eight weeks. You know, we only open the doors twice a year and there've been people, it's almost half full already. And the doors have been open for two days because there were so many people on the wait list from last time they couldn't get in. So if this is calling your name, if this resonates with you at all, um, definitely take advantage of Siobhan's discount while there's still right. spots. And this is a progressive pricing situation, so it will not be lower than it is right now. So yeah. as, as we go, do you want to explain the pricing a little bit in that, Sinclair? Yeah, so we've given you the Siobhan's discount for 48 hours. And I from after that, I have to raise it back up to the real price because um, it's... This is so much of my practitioner team's time and I got to take care of them. So, cause yeah. they're, they're live in the course with you every day supporting them. And let's not tell everybody and all of Sinclair's friends that we have the best deal. Let's just yeah, move please on. don't. <laughs> this, this is this, Sinclair and I have been in it and at it together, helping people for years now. And so she and I, she definitely gives me that best price for my community as a courtesy. And I really appreciate it, Sinclair. And I know my, my, my people in, my community appreciate it too. So I just want to encourage you all to take advantage of this. If it's calling you, if it's not, we understand, you know, timing's everything, but sometimes, yeah. you know, that resistance can be a beckoning. Someone said that to me today and I was like, wow, oh, that's beautiful. That was powerful. It's like, I'm so resistant to several things. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Well, we're a human. Right. Yeah, we're human. It's a be it can be a beckoning. Um, okay, let's see. Suzanne, your SIBO is caused by abdominal cancer surgery, so that would be adhesions. Um, you had small intestine and ileocecal ileocecal valve were removed. That's very different. SIBO is soon is soon ensued, sorry, in June. And that would also be because your migrating motor complex was impacted. You're on atratil, all of this trifola, no help. This would seem like a lifelong condition for you. How do you manage that? It could be, you may have an underlying cause that, that wouldn't be able to be resolved. Some people like with scleroderma, there are ways to cope with that. You want to make sure that you are um, as healthy as possible around all of that. And um, I'm so sorry that you've gone through that because that is that is so intense. And I'm, I'm so, so sorry about that. Here's what I would say about yeah, that is um, mm -hmm. there are people that come into rapid gut reset. I would say about a third to half of every cohort that um, has a very rare condition as well as common gut issues. Like this is for serious healing, you know? Mm -hmm. And what you'll see happen is these unlivable symptoms 
that are taking over your whole life from your, when you think it's all your rare condition, as you lower the body burden and as you actually tackle the most common root causes, um, that, that problem becomes much more manageable and it comes down to, it becomes much more clear between you and your specialist, what is actually left over to work on that needs to be individualized to me. And you also have to remember that this course is really um, a choose your own miracle. We tell you exactly how to evaluate for yourself, whether or not any of the detox therapies we talk about, whether it's dental rinses, nasal rinses, if you have silent dental infections, persistent sinus infection issues, you know, tonsil issues, interference fields, like we cover a lot of things that you may or may not have, but you help you evaluate that for yourself. So you're basically knocking down the background noise and all of the distress your body just can't get up and over so that you and your doctor can actually be like, oh, this is the size problem. Not all of this. It's just this, you know? I want to show you one other thing. Um, let me make sure I'm going to do this right. Do, 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 do. Make sure you use that coupon, Siobhan, you guys, because that's really important. Yeah. Not everybody has that. Yeah. And um, that's good. That amount is good for just 48 hours. So this is what it looks like once you get in there. You're going to see what's included. You're going to see some nice testimonials. You're going to see the payment program is frequently asked questions. More folks that have been helped. A lot of folks. A lot of folks. I'm going to scroll back up. Sorry if I'm. So these are the modules. So do you want to, mm -hmm. we'll wrap up after this, but can you take us through each module? Yeah, sure. Thanks. So this is all about easing in and giving the body wins. So you have to, you can't go from zero to 60. You need to have an on-ramp, right? And for so many of us, it's about um, taking down the irritation and the inflammation first. So that's module one, right? We also talk about things like cleaning up your water source and making sure you have clean water because you'd be amazed at how many people are still drinking fridge water or Brita water or something and thinking that's enough of a filter and you're actually getting poisoned and your, your gut is responding to that every day. So that we always take out, like tackle a couple of those things in each module. So we talk about um, herbicides and pesticides in here and getting started with energy production, increasing your energy. Module two is all about understanding dental infections, silent dental infections that might be leaking down into the gut you are such a huge advocate for this in the space, Siobhan, and I'll forever be grateful to you for raising people's awareness about this mm. with your magical summit around this. Um, and you may not even know dental issues are actually leaking down into your gut and causing that persistent dysbiosis. So we teach you how to evaluate that with very gentle at-home dental rinses, how to turn that around, and also when and how to seek out a dentist support for um, you know further investigation if needed. Module three is all about learning about mold. So we have to actually like, yes, we're going to talk about rebuilding the gut lining. So even if you don't have a mold issue, you have plenty to do this week, like restoring the villi, resealing the gut, and also um, dealing with mold on the inside and also on the outside. So for so many people, you ignore mold in your house because it's scary and it sounds expensive to deal with. And it's like, I can't even deal with that right now. But guess what? There's always something you can do in your budget to reduce the body burden. And then module four is actually about rebalancing your gastric juices. So rebalancing stomach acid, bile flow, all the things, and you start detoxing, pulling out those parasites. And I really say that and deliberately, we wanna draw out the parasites, pull them out intact, whether they're microscopic or they're the bigger worms, like, you know, strongyloides, ringworm, pinworm, um, all of those, because we want to, um, Actually, they are since they are toxin sponges, we don't want to just explode them in the gut and retoxify the body. So module five, we're talking about how to protect your uh, your body from EMFs, how to evaluate those. This is a great one to have your family watch along with you so that you're not the bearer of bad news. It's like, hey, we're just gonna be a little bit smarter. It's really more like EMF hygiene, you know? Right. And then module six is all about um, heavy metals, and um, also those radioactive elements and just reclaiming your vitality for the long term. What is the, for the first 10 action takers, what does the $50 detox credit cover? And will it include the sleep bonus? Yes. So if you buy live today, you'll absolutely get the, the sleep course free. Yes. Okay. And 
you can, um, your $50 credit to the store will go towards whatever supplements you want to get to follow along in the course. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's if you're doing that right now. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So yeah. I just wanted to tell you all, when I first met Sinclair and Michael and they started talking about EMF and toxic electricity, I kind of thought they were nuts. I was like, oh, I think they're really smart, but this, no, it's fine. Look, my lights go on. I can't hear anything. I don't smell anything. And then she sent me a meter and we walked around my house and keep in mind, I have had a, a building biologist come to my house before. So mm -hmm. I was kind of into it, but um, yeah, that was extremely disturbing. And then I just um, look at my garage, guys. You see that? That oh my is God. my garage. And if you pull, this oh. literally came through while we've been talking. Yeah. So water came in through a window on the top of the garage and has been dripping down in between the wall of the outside and my garage. So every day, Cars probably effed, you know, the whole bit. So I just, unfortunately, mold happens. You have to be diligent. There's a quick story I want to share with you and release you from a denial that I had. I was so stressed at the time that um, there was a teenage, David, my husband moved this piece of furniture and it, we, it's a small house. We moved this piece of furniture and on the white carpet, there was a little moldy spot. And it was adjacent to the other wall was the um, shower. And I was so overloaded at the time, this was years ago, that I said, honey, I, I, I can't do anything about it. I don't even know what to do. And unfortunately, I said to him, just put the piece of furniture back. No. And I know. And so older, wiser. And um and then when we moved, we did move from that house and I saw the mold on the floor. I'm not proud of this, but um, I said, oh my gosh, there's mold. And he looked at me like I was crazy. He's like, I know, I told you about that. Well, number one, honey, why didn't you do anything about it? But that's another story. Number two, he's like, no, seriously, I told you about that. I was like, you did not. You know, I didn't like have a fight with him, but I was like, no, you didn't. That, I would have done something about that. Oh my gosh, about a half an hour, I had to come back tail between the legs and said, oh my gosh, David, I'm so sorry. I remember now. So I just want to wake everybody up from mold denial. Mm -hmm. And I understand personally how intimidating it is. When I worked in the studio, I'll wrap this up because it's, it, it's everybody has their own situations. Mainly, I'm so glad you all have a solution in this course. But someone suggested to me that I change jobs. And I thought, well, that's the most insane thing I've ever heard in my entire life. And that person died right there for me. Well, it turns out, fast forward, it was the right thing. Unfortunately, I was able to, you know, retire and all that. But and I'm not saying everyone needs to quit their job. I'm just saying you guys snap out of it. If there is mold in your life, you need to at least be paying attention. It, like I could have taken binders. I didn't know anything about binders then. I could have been doing things to help yeah. myself. And this is, this is just one of the tiny portions of this very special program that Sinclair and Michael have for you. So um, mm. I've been educated so much more, opened my perspective so much more. I wish you all the best of health. My health improved dramatically after working with them. And um, so they're not my doctor. They're not your doctor. This is not in place of a medical consultation at a doctor's office. But I do think that there are a lot of things that we can all do to help and support ourselves in keeping with the SOS theme, which is of save ourselves. So with that. Thank you. That's so beautifully said. Thank you for sharing Thank you. that. Thank I you didn't know all. that story about the furniture. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Uh, do take advantage of that. And um, we will uh, see you on the other side. So take care, everyone. Thanks, Sinclair. You're so welcome. We'll okay. see you in the course, guys. Okay, bye.